should either of these parents be charged for really what were the actions of their 15-year-old son? Joining me now, Geraldo Rivera, the veteran award-winning journalist who has long been the dean of covering crime. Ashley Banfield, host of Banfield on News Nation, who covers a lot of stories, including a lot of crime stories every night on her show. And Jesse Weber, attorney and anchor for the Law and Crime Network, where he follows all of these stories and this one in particular closely. Thank you all for coming on the program. All right, Geraldo, first to you. Uh, do you think this is a case where they should have brought charges against the parents? Yes, you can be mad at them. Yes, you can say that they should get sued civilly, but a criminal case against the mom and dad? They were grotesquely negligent, Dan. Uh, I believe they, they failed utterly. They failed their own child. They failed the four that he killed. They failed uh, the, the families of those, uh, of those poor victims. And he accepted, the 15-year-old accepted responsibility. He said at the time of uh, you know, his, the plea, in his case, we're here because of me today, because of what I chose to do. My parents did not know what I planned to do. They are not at fault. That's what he told the judge. But now that he's been sentenced to life without parole, for goodness sake, the most severe sentence you can, you can get, uh, he, as appellate lawyers, the lawyers say, shut up, kid, you're not going to testify in the parents' trials. So the parents will not have access to his medical records. Uh, they will not be able to question him. Uh, his lawyers will, will plead the fifth. Uh, he will not testify, in other words. I think that this is a very close case. Mm. Uh, whether or not the, the law wants to spread its wings to, to, I think parents are responsible for so many of these, at least indirectly, uh, but this case is the first, as you say, so uh, we'll be watching it very closely. Let yeah. me play that piece of sound that you just made reference to. I want to actually let people hear it in, uh, in his own words in court at the uh, sentencing. Number nine. We are all here because of me. My actions were because of what I chose to do. I do not diminish any ability to anyone who could have stopped me, of anyone of a school or parents. They did not know, and I did not tell them what I planned to do, so they are not at fault. Ashley, it is interesting that now, as Geraldo points out, his new lawyers are saying, don't talk, don't testify, because he actually could be a powerful witness for his parents if he's willing to repeat that on the witness stand. Oh, he would be undoubtedly the most powerful witness in both of their cases, at least for mom. Her lawyers say they've got evidence from a psychiatrist that Ethan absolutely never said a word to anyone about wanting therapy and having problems, and that Ethan lied to a friend in a text message about begging his parents for therapy, that's massive. On the other side of the coin, if I were the attorney or the appellate attorney for Ethan, I'd say, you're not saying boo. It's every man for himself in this little family of three that has literally had a grenade tossed into it by Ethan's actions. Every single member of that family now needs to behave like a criminal defendant that everyone else has to be to blame but him. That's just the way the law works. It's the strategy, whether you like it or lump it, and the rest of us can all think it's deplorable and despicable and that... Yeah. Three of them should face, you know, criminal uh, rep repercussions. But as far as defending themselves go, they're all doing exactly what they should be doing. You know, Jesse, uh, putting aside the moral side of this, yep. on the legal side, you know, this is a real reach. I'm not saying a jury won't convict. I'm just saying as a legal matter to start holding parents criminally responsible, where you charge them with manslaughter, meaning causing the death. Right. It was foreseeable, right? They have to be able to prove it was reasonably foreseeable that he would do this. Yeah, and the prosecutor said not that they, they are the cause, but a cause in it. And you could argue, look, they had a substantial reason to believe that he was a danger to himself and others. He was hearing voices. He was seeing hallucinations. They buy him a gun. They know he's researching ammunition. They see these kinds of drawings. They don't take him out of school. Here's the thing, though. In the past few years, we have seen involuntary manslaughter charges being used in ways we never thought before. There was a case called the Michelle Carter case yeah. where she was convicted of involuntary manslaughter for pressuring her boyfriend over the phone to kill himself. At that time, I said, no way they're going to be able to get a conviction. They did. So I don't think it would be impossible to have it. And it got, held, it got upheld by the courts, it did. too, right? It yeah. did. I I'll tell you this much. If you're going to charge a parent, 
with involuntary manslaughter for the actions of their child in a school shooting. It's this case with this sets of facts that you really want to see. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.